Hey everybody, Dr. Chris here, and I'm here today at Human 2.0, and I'm going to talk to you today just a little bit about um, some exercises that I use with my patients after shoulder surgery, and more specifically, we're going to talk about uh, a shoulder mobilization exercise for range of motion after surgery, um, so shoulder surgery or shoulder injury. And so um, I find that uh, like after surgery um, for a shoulder problem, whether that's a rotator cuff, anterior stabilization or whatever, um, generally speaking, we are going to immobilize your shoulder for a period of time. Consequently, the people are going to end up with shoulders that are stiff and then we have to end up mobilizing those shoulders afterwards with physical therapy. And um, it takes quite a long time uh, for people to regain their range of motion. So more or less historically what people have done is they've used a number of techniques such as um, wall walks, so coming to the wall, walking your fingers up the wall um, to regain range of motion um, or they have used other techniques such as pulleys so you hold the pulley you hold your the, the rope in one hand and then a, using a pulley system you pull your arm up to help regain the range of motion or or otherwise still they may um, have um, a therapist pull on their arm. So these are all sort of standard techniques. Um, and one of the, each, each of these techniques has um, both benefits and, uh, or, or has both uh, positive and negative things that are associated with it. Um, I'm, I'm gonna sh speak to those briefly and then I'll tell you what I do for my, my own patients. So um, when we are talking about the wall walks, so at first, when patients are working to get their arms up the wall. So the wall walk um, is a, uh, a technique that requires you to have a certain element of strength. After you've had surgery, you're going to have a shoulder that is stiff and you're also going to have a shoulder that is weak because you have had atrophy of the muscles and the muscles are weak and so you need to restore both of those things. But I find that if you tie the restoration of range of motion to the restoration of strength. In other words, if you work on both things at the same time, um, your range of motion, which takes long time to, um, to regain, is going to be restricted by the strength. Because, for example, when you are walking your fingers up the wall, once you get to uh, about 90 degrees, of, of shoulder abduction or if you're doing a forward forward elevation now you are limited by the strength of your arm strength of the muscles to get your arm up so not only is it tight but you're weak and so um, the range of motion is limited by your ability to lift the arm up so that's a, a problem with that method if you use um, instead the pulley system, so now I'm going to put my, my operated arm, which is tight and weak, I'm going to grab a, a rope over here, and then I'm going to use my other arm through the pulley system to pull it up into the air. In this particular case, we are still limited by muscular strength, but not by muscular strength of the arm that is being pulled. We are being limited by muscular strength of the opposite arm because um, your arm actually has a weight to it and it weighs uh, roughly eight to nine percent of your body weight. That's the, the weight of your arm. And so if you do not have the muscular strength on your opposite side to lift nine percent of your body weight, then you'll have a problem. And so for elderly patients, I, I often have patients who go to physiotherapists and they tell them to use a pulley system and they get a pulley system, they do that. I find for those patients, they're limited by that. So that, that's very, uh, so that's another drawback for that technique. So whenever I'm trying to think about ways to um, develop range of motion, I am trying to um, follow a, a couple of principles. So number one, I don't want the range, I, I want to take the range of motion and separate that away from the, the development of strength. That's number one. 
Number two, I, I don't want the um, range of motion to be um, limited by muscular strength. Not only do I not want strengthening and range of motion to be tied together, I don't want strength to, to play any role in that whatsoever. Um, and number three, I want it to be a, um, I want the development of the range of motion to be something that is relatively simple for people to do, um, does not require a lot of equipment, and uh, will generally um, allow gravity to assist um, or will allow um, the patient to develop the range of motion in a closed chain technique. In other words, they are um, using the ground and moving themselves around the ground rather than to, to be trying to just move their arm in space. So those are the general principles. And if I try to find an approach, or if I, if I try to develop range of motion, I, I try to, to include all of those. Sometimes we're not able to use all of those, but that's, that's the general goal. So in this particular case, um, I have a way of, of having patients work on range of motion for their shoulders. Um, and uh, it, it, it's something that's relatively simple. It's not require a ton of strength and it uses gravity. And so what we're gonna do for developing range of motion is that we're going to do an isometric hold, but we're going to use gravity to assist. Um, and for this, we're going to use relatively light weights. And because we're using light weights, the force that's being applied to the arm is not significant. Um, in other words, you don't have to worry about somebody ripping something out because they're, they're you know, or, or damaging the repair because we don't have a therapist pushing with all their might. Um, and the, the weight is very, very, um, is very physiological. Um, so there is one proviso and they must, they should be able to get their arm to 90 degrees. If they can get their arm to 90 degrees, then they can use this exercise to get the development over the head. And this is actually the range that is the most difficult for most patients. Usually they're able to get to 90 degrees, but then they start to hike their uh, shoulder to get um, the, the remaining range of motion. Um, so the minimum is they have to be able to get to 90 degrees. They should be able to do it with a depressed and retracted scapula and no, no elevation. I like this technique that I'm gonna show you because it actually, um, uh, allows people to develop their range of motion without the hiking and without the cheating because when you do this technique they're, they're hiking your shoulder doesn't offer any advantages and so people tend not to do it. Also this technique allows their shoulder to be um, retracted and depressed because basically that's where um, it's, it's going to be uh, most efficient to do this and it actually requires more work to cheat, to uh, elevate your shoulder, or to protract your shoulder forward. So the technique that I use is this. It's really simple. So I get them to do it either on the floor, or they can do it on a um, on their bed. And so here we have some weights. I have a two and a half pound weight, and I have a five pound weight. But generally, I tell people to do this at home with a um, a can of, of vegetables or um, you know a container or something. Um, you, know, it's, you know, a pound, two pounds, um, but up to five pounds, okay? And so what, what they're gonna do is they're gonna lay down, and you can see right away that because they're laying down, that the shoulders are retracted, the shoulders are to the back. If you protract your shoulder, that actually requires work to do this. So number one, the stage has been set appropriately because your scapula are retracted. Also, you can see that lifting my arm up overhead it doesn't help me to do this okay to engage my my um, traps to elevate my scapula it doesn't help to lift my arm so this is a great way to get rid of that um, uh, the uh, elevation of the traps and the elevation of the scapula um, when people are trying to lift their arm so what I have them do for this is to take the weight and to punch the arm out into the air. So this is the forward elevation of 90 degrees. So now that they have that, 
If they make a platform with the hand and hold the weight towards the fingers, what's going to happen is that because this is, because the weight is behind the arm, okay, you've now created a fulcrum at the wrist, which is pulling the weight to the floor. Except that your shoulder doesn't just drive straight down to the floor, as long as you keep your arm straight, what's going to happen is that this weight, which wants to be on the floor, is going to pull the arm in an upwards direction. In other words, it's going to give you more forward elevation of your shoulder. And so the patient's task here is only to hold the arm in the extended position and to resist the weight. And if, as they do this over time, their their, the weight is gradually going to bring the shoulder towards the floor. Now, if they're doing this on their bed, obviously these patients are gonna have weakness. They may not, after they've held this for a period of time, they're not gonna be able to bring the weight up, so then they can just let go of the weight, and then they can bring their arm back. As they get as they get um, a better range of motion, they can, and as they get stronger, they can increase the weight. So again, they'll punch out, hold the weight on the backhand, or on the, towards the fingers, and allow the weight to do the job. Now, it, the, a couple things that are important with this. So number one, it's important to hold the weight in this way, as opposed to this. If you hold the weight in line with the arm, it's just gonna keep the arm in this position. So you want gravity to, to pull the arm. So you want to put it on a platform with the fingers. So that's number one. Number two, this is not something where you're going to punch out, hold it here, wait 10 seconds. This is the kind of hold where you want to hold this position for a few minutes, one, two, or three minutes, because you want all the muscles particularly the serratus, the, the lats. These are the things that are holding your arm in the deep press position and not allowing it to extend above your head. You want all of those things to gradually stretch out. So you have to do this over time. And during this time, all you're trying to do is relax, resist the weight, allow it to move in a slow manner, and keep your arm straight. Let go of the weight bring your arm up, and then you can repeat that process. So, as I said, the benefits of this is that the, scapular is, the scapula is set, it's retracted, it's depressed. They can bring the arm up. There is no hiking because that does you no benefit. And once they've regained that range of motion that, down there, now they will have a, a range of motion which um, is a functional range of motion and does not have any compensatory mechanisms. And then now you can work to add strength to that by adding, by now taking the person, standing them up, and then doing the same thing against resistance but while they're standing. But this way, we've used gravity to help us. Um, we've used the, their, um, the supine position to allow us to eliminate compensatory mechanisms and this is something that's relatively easy. It doesn't require them to have a, a, a significant amount of strength and it does not marry strength with the development of range of motion.